Okay, I'm back. So here's the final bit of our uh, season one, part two lecture. Before we go, I want to introduce a new topic just briefly, and that's the question of friendship. What does friendship demand out of us morally? What kind of an ethical or moral relation is friendship? I feel like we spend a lot of time in life and in philosophy, actually, thinking about the ethics of relationships, but typically the relationships that we think about are relationships between lovers or romantic partners, or sometimes we think about the relationships between parents and children. Every once in a while, we'll think about relationships between things like bosses and employees, but we don't spend very much time thinking about friendship as a structured social and ethical relationship, even though for most of us, friendships are among the most important and the most common relationships that we've got, right? What do friends owe one another? Why do we have friends? What do we get out of it? This is a question that we're going to take up later in the term, but I wanted to introduce it now, because if you think about it, in season one, we get a lot of reflection on friendship precisely by seeing how friendship can be tested. So there are a whole series of betrayals of friendship in season one, and there's going to be some big betrayals in later seasons too. All of them are on Bojack's part, right? Bojack betrays his friends. That's an important fact about him. Just think about how many times in this season Bojack betrays his friends. He betrays Sarah Lynn by enabling her substance addiction, and he arguably also has betrayed her much earlier by not giving her what she needs as a kid, not giving her a proper role model or treating her well as a kid. Obviously, Super importantly, he betrays Herb Kazaz by not standing up for him when he loses his job for being gay. That's what sets up the whole forgiveness scene of, or the apology scene rather that we just talked about. He betrays Todd very dramatically by hiring a character actress to hire character actress Margot Martindale to undermine his rock opera is one of the more um, bizarre plots, right? But it's definitely about friendship and betrayal. He also betrays Diane, I think more subtly at first, by giving that speech to her family about how she's nobody and feeding into that family mythology that she finds so toxic. He betrays her by not firmly taking her side against her family when they're basically trying to gaslight her and undermine her. That one is a subtle one because he does try to make it up to her later in the episode. But then finally he betrays her again by kissing her after she's made it clear that she doesn't want that and she finds it a confusion of her relationship with Mr. Peanut Butter. So there are so many really serious friendship betrayals of various kinds, right? And they're different from one another. You can betray somebody by not standing by their side. You could betray somebody by not supporting their projects. Um, you can betray somebody by enabling them to betray themselves. These are all different kinds of betrayals that we get. So what are we supposed to learn from all of these betrayals? Mostly I think that what's happening here is they're setting up the theme of betrayal for later episodes to help us think about what friendship requires. Because to understand what counts as betraying a friendship, you need to understand what we owe our friends and how not to betray them. And so the first season is encouraging us to do some thinking about that, right? These betrayals show, by the example of failing a friendship, the different things that friendship requires. What are some of them that we see because they were betrayed, right? It, friendship requires supporting your friend's agency and autonomy and their projects. It requires standing up for them against bullying and against gaslighting. It requires being willing to publicly support them when they are under threat. Um, it requires being willing to sacrifice one's own comforts and one's own interests for them. And these are all things that Bojack at various moments fails to do in this season. Right? More generally, I guess we could say that being somebody's friend requires supporting that person's reality and their agency and their well-being in the special ways that only someone who knows you well can do, right? I can support the well-being of a stranger or the autonomy of a stranger by being nice to them or helping them do something. But the ways in which I can support the autonomy and well-being of a friend are different because I know their needs intimately and I know their vulnerabilities and I know more about what it would take for them to flourish. So I think we learn all this by seeing the ways that Bojack fails. But the other interesting thing we learn here 
is that friendship requires at least some ability to forgive, right? Not an infinite ability to forgive. We don't have to forgive everything. But friendship, because no friend is perfect, requires the ability to forgive our friends. And so one of the, so this is to tie together the two halves of the lecture, right? One of the things we see in this season is that even though he betrays his friends, almost always those friendships are not ruined because his friends offer him forgiveness. And it's not forgiveness that they owe him necessarily, but it's forgiveness that they are willing to offer in order to sustain the friendship. Diane forgives him, Todd forgives him, and this makes it all the more moving when Herb does not forgive him, right? That friendship can't be salvaged. He betrayed that friendship and without forgiveness, that friendship is not gonna continue. So maybe earlier when we were talking about why we want forgiveness, what the value of it is, this doesn't fully answer the question, but one value of it seems to be that it allows for a certain kind of repair and continuance of a relationship given that we're all pretty imperfect at sustaining relationships. So I'm not trying to argue to you, I'm trying to argue to you that through the various ways that Bojack fails to be a good friend during this season, we start to get a really rich sense of the moral shape of friendship as a human relationship. And I think that this is going to be important in all the seasons yet to come. Okay, I hope you enjoyed season one and that you um, have a relatively rewarding time finishing the assignments for this module and our next lecture will be on season two.